Hello and welcome to back to Meet the Candidates. I am your host today, Sharima Bauer, and my guest is Mayor Dr. Karen Weaver, who is a candidate for the upcoming November 7th mayoral recall election. Mayor Weaver, thank you very much for being here today. Well, I'm glad to be here. We're glad to have you. So just to start generally, Mayor Weaver, what has it been like being mayor under PA 436, the emergency manager law? Well, you know, uh, I came in under that, and it's been it's been interesting. It's been difficult at times because to come into a situation where normally you know that the mayor usually has power, the mayor brings the the staffing that has helped them to get where they are and gets to pick who they want to have in different positions, and to not be able to do that was hard. It, it really, really was. I walked into a situation, and I walked into it knowingly, um, but... Uh, to have everybody around me that was appointed by the state was a difficult thing. It really was because we had two different visions and two different agendas. And so it made it difficult, especially initially, to push forward what I wanted to have happen for the city of Flint. But I was able to do that anyway. Uh, I'm glad to say that I have uh, been able to fight for home rule. I walked in saying I believe in home rule and that was what I wanted to have happen. And so I fought for that and it's nice to see that we're almost there. We're not completely there, but we're almost there. But it was. It was um, still not having a complete voice. And that was one of the issues that we fought about, and that's what we were so angry about. At least one of the things was uh, not only water, but our voice had been taken under this act. You know, we, the, the, the office of the mayor and city council, all of all the powers had been taken. So it did. It made it hard. It made it hard. But... Uh, I'm, I'm happy about what has happened during this time and being able to get, you know, most of the power back. We still have the RTAB in place, yes. and I'm, I'll be glad when RTAB is gone as well yes. because I believe in home rule. You know, I said that from the beginning, my, my opinion or my belief hasn't changed, and that's one of the things I said then, and I'm going to continue to say I'm going to fight for home rule. Mm -hmm. I believe in, you know, uh, democracy and local power and strong mayor form of government, all of those things that we had in place. Yes. And earlier this week, uh, we had the State of the City Address. Yes. Yes. And, of course, one of the main topics on that was about GLIWA. Mm -hmm. And, you know, concerning moving the city onto a 30-year contract with GLIWA, a Great Lakes Water Authority, why support such a long-term contract? Many residents are concerned about it being that long. Well, you know, and that's what's really interesting to me is because we had a long-term contract before and nobody said anything. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things we wanted was a way to control rates. And if you really look at what's going on in water and other municipalities, these are the kinds of agreements that you have to enter into to, to be able to stabilize rates and get the best rates. And even as we looked at what other municipalities were doing, uh, 30 years was what you got. Doesn't mean I didn't ask for it. So let me put that on the record as well, because we did try to see if we could get 15 years or 10 years, but they were not going into any uh, shorter um, agreements. But one of the things that I also thought was important as far as with this GLEWA, we were upset. The people were upset because we did not like uh, that our pipe had been sold, mm -hmm. uh, that we were being forced is how it seemed to go to KWA. And the rates were going up. We had a $7 million a year bond payment that we know a city that's financially strapped like Flint cannot handle. And so one of the things that I wanted to do, and I didn't do this um, without thinking and putting a lot of thought and effort and energy and having so many experts around the table to help make this decision on what was in the best interest of the people. And one of our complaints initially was uh, politics and, and finances were put before the public health of the people. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to make sure we didn't make that mistake again. And so going into this agreement with Great Lakes was really based on public health. It was a public health decision because we that was the water source we had, and that was the water source we wanted to get back to. That's where the water quality, when you're doing all of the testing, we're getting uh, better results every single time we test. And so it was a public health decision first and then a financial decision. Mm -hmm. And um, so not only did we not 
want to have to change the water source and go through all of that testing and starting over when we've been there for almost two years now, yes. uh, and, and people were comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't believe we deserve to have to have that kind of pain and anxiety and panic again. Mm -hmm. uh, but also when we talk about being financially responsible, uh, it got us out of that seven million dollar a year bond payment. It gave us a backup source that we had never had before. It gave us access to the, uh, they call it the RAP program, which is the Water Relief Assistance Program. Mm -hmm. And while we put something in place here in Flint, it's temporary because it was based on donations that we got. And once that money was gone to help people with water bills, it's gone. It's gone. And with this, that's something that is there and it's there for the duration. Mm -hmm. So that was a good thing. Also, with this water recommendation, um, we own some of the water. What we've okay. paid into, we own that and we can sell that. And that's another revenue source for the city. And that's been one of the issues. One of the concerns is we didn't have that revenue source. And we got our pipe back that the emergency manager took. So um, I think it was a really good deal. Like I said, I didn't make that in isolation or by myself and had many experts at the table. And I really took into consideration what residents said. So, you know, I I've heard it come up that this is a long-term deal, but it's no longer than what we had before. And it's actually uh, without the finances and the financial burden that's, that's attached to what we had before. So we had a longer-term deal before. It was almost 40 years. So we were able to cut it by 10 years, and I don't think people knew that. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, when we researched to see, okay, what do other cities do? Uh, they're long-term deals because that's how you get a stable uh, uh, price. And let me say this as well, because we're talking about rates. Yeah. And one of the things that we were hoping for uh, with this, with this um, recommendation was in talking to General Motors, General Motors said, we're waiting on that recommendation to get passed because we want to come back as a customer. If we come back as a customer and we talked about that revenue, we were saying mm -hmm. that might be a way for us to lower water rates. Uh, okay. That uh, also gave us the opportunity to be able to have money to fix uh, the infrastructure besides just the pipes, but the infrastructure for the city of Flint. And when you know you're losing between 35 and 40 percent of your water and we're still paying for it, uh, that would also be helpful as far as being able to lower those rates. So those were the kinds of things we were looking at. So if we go back to Gliwa mm -hmm. then for the 30-year contract, and General Motors has you know, absolutely said that, yes, we will come back as a, as a paying As a paying customer, customer, and that's what we were excited about because yeah. we had water to sell. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, can you speak to also the tensions between the MDEQ, the Michigan Department uh, of Environmental Quality, and the city council um, and, and in terms of the lawsuit? Well, oh, in terms of the lawsuit that's going on right yes. now. Well, you know what? Let me just say this first. I think there were tensions with MDEQ oh, be before, <laughs> even before the lawsuit. Before that. And um, that's been one of the issues um, mm -hmm. is there's always been some tension there just because of what's happened. Yes. Now, I, I don't know how much of that I can explain as far as the lawsuit because that's been between MDEQ and the council. Um, um, and most, I was going to say, most of the yeah. tension I've heard has... It's been around the length of time, which, what, like I said, I don't understand yeah. that. And saying that they haven't had enough time to be able to really explore all options. And I know that every step of the way, we were giving them the information. And, in fact, we made sure. I know one of the things I asked was when we had the um, fl FWIC. And I know it's Flint Interagency, the, uh, the meetings that we had on Fridays. Yeah. I wanted to make sure that council had a seat at that mm -hmm. so they would know every single step of the way what yeah. was being decided and the direction that we were going and presentations were always made to them. Yeah. Um, now, whether or not that was taken back by their member or not, I do not know. I do not know. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not quite sure why there is that much tension there. I know why there was some before, because we all had that tension. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the things I know that we had to do was figure out a way. We're still all in this boat together. Yes. I, I mean, it's not like we can get rid of them mm -hmm. and, um, uh, you know, MDEQ. So we, my goal was to figure out a way, uh, how are we going to work together? And I know some of the tension is, I believe, that lack of trust. And that was why it was so important to me and the administration to have some independent testers come mm -hmm. uh, just to corroborate the findings that MDEQ would say they got. So 
We might not believe them, but mm -hmm. we will believe some of the other uh, people that are doing the testing. I know Wayne State was one of them, but it was really important to make sure we brought that in because of that tension and because of that mistrust. Mm -hmm. You know, and one thing you also just mentioned, I'd like to maybe expand a little okay. bit more on that. Um, in terms of General Motors, you know, and their mm -hmm. revenues being able to, you know, bring down the cost for right. you know, the regular, you know, the residents. Right. Um, what are some uh, other options that you're pursuing to address the water affordability? Well, like in I the said, city? Uh, in addition to just having General Motors, because that's not the only thing we can count on. But if we could right size our infrastructure. I mean, just think, we're paying for, like I said, 35 to 40 percent of the water that we're losing. If we weren't losing that water yeah. through leaks and breaks in the pipes, you know, in the infrastructure, we wouldn't pay for it. We wouldn't be paying for those kinds of things. And right now, you know, we're paying for infrastructure that is for... 250,000 people because we were 200,000 and we were growing and so the infrastructure was built for a larger city mm -hmm. and so we're still paying for all of that with half that population so when you pay for it you know it's like I'm paying twice as much because half of the people have left and then you're losing it through the cracks and so that's why we wanted to right size the infrastructure that's why it was so important not only to fix the lead service lines but to fix the entire infrastructure in the city and then get the new monitors because that was going to help us as well okay there's a lot to talk about here. There's a lot to talk about. <laughs> There's a lot to discuss. And There's so a lot happening in Flint. <laughs> there is a lot happening in Flint, and we're talking about some of that right now. Yes. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and take a break, and this has been Meet the Candidates, and I am your host, Sharima Bauer. My guest today has been is Mayor Dr. Karen Weaver, and we will be right back. They say you don't have to be so strong, but this is my mother, my purpose. Strength is not optional. See, I lift her now like she raised me then, so I know my strength is super, but I'm still human. Oh, look who's here. Una nueva madre aprende a patinar y con una pierna rota va a terminar. No tienes que ser perfecto para ser un padre perfecto. Miles de hermanos que esperan ser adoptados te aceptarán tal como eres. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. I see you mobbing over her. Let's go. Let's mob. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo, we mobbing. Come on, girl. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Hey, let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Candidates. We're continuing our conversation today with Mayor Dr. Karen Weaver. Mayor Weaver, a few moments ago, you talked about the you know the pipes, and yes. we're talking about, of course, and how was the what was the impetus for your vision for the Fast Start program? Well, you know, I remember when I was fighting for this, and one of the things having conversation with the governor and people from around the state was. We talked about this water, and we knew this water was poisoned, and we knew the only way we were going to be able to fix that was with new infrastructure, was with getting those lead and those galvanized pipes out of the ground and giving people new pipes. Mm -hmm. And I remember the conversation was, you're not going to be able to do it. It costs too much, and we're going to wait for the, coats, the pipes to get recoded. 
And that made no sense uh, because this had never happened before, uh, what happened in Flint. And so no one could tell us how long it was going to take to recoat those pipes. And, and one of the other issues was we really didn't care what it cost because uh, you would just put profit over the lives, you know, the health and the well-being of the people. And we said that shouldn't matter. Our lives are worth more. And so I remember having a conversation actually with uh, Mayor Bernero in Lansing because they were addressing some mm -hmm. of these same issues. Now, yes. they were addressing it before mm -hmm. there was a crisis That's for them. Right. Mm -hmm. But what when I met with him and people from the Lansing Board of Water and Life, they said they've been doing a, a they had a technique that did not cost as much mm -hmm. and was actually quicker. And so uh, we got together, and that's what we wanted to see was how can we do this where it's not going to cost what they're saying it's going to cost. And after meeting with them and sitting down with their team from Lansing, we found out there was a way that would almost cut it in half. And so that's what happened, and we wanted to call it Fast Start because we said it doesn't take, you know, you do this in about half the time because you're not digging the way you would have to dig the I don't, want, I don't know if it's the old-fashioned way, but the other technique. And so that's what was so exciting about this. And so when we got the cost, uh, we said, we need to make this happen. We really need to make this happen. And so that was, that was where it got started because we weren't going to wait for pipes to get recoded. And the other thing about that was we shouldn't have to wait for pipes to get recoded mm -hmm. because I don't think we were going to, we already don't trust. And um, we needed to see and we deserve to have new pipes. And yes. so that's what it was, and it's how are we going to make this happen and then get the money for it, Right. and then get the money for it. Exactly, and that has been a point of great contention <coughs> yes. as well. You know, and re residents, and speaking of the pipes, you know, let's, let's talk about the residents mm -hmm. for a moment. Um, you know, the residents of the city of Flint are frustrated, mm -hmm. as, as you know, and I know that you know, you've heard them speak, and I know that you're listening to them. And I, you know, if you continue as mayor, mm -hmm. what do you think could or should be done to mitigate the stress and trauma that they've experienced? In you know, and crisis? and that's the hard part. Mm -hmm. That is the the difficult part because some of it. I mean, we're we're doing some things, uh, putting things in place as far as different services and supports that we know all of the uh, families need yes. and deserve. Mm -hmm. And some people may never get over all of the emotional trauma that has come as a result of this. Some people may never get past some of the physical trauma that has come. And that's why we said this is not only a, 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 this is an infrastructure crisis, this is a public health crisis. And so it was so important to fight to get money because we know we can fix some things quickly. We know that uh, we needed water. We started addressing that, but we talked about the diet that we have to have in place and access to uh, fresh fruits and produce, those kinds of things. That's why we've talked about bringing grocery stores, because we need that kind of access. We've talked about the physical component that goes along with it. That's why we've been working hard to get playgrounds for our for our youth yes. to be able to get that uh, the physical component that we need. Yes. But we still need other kinds of things. That's why it was so important to get school nurses back into the schools, because we know that, we, like I said, it's physical. That's why it was so important to get mental health services yes. for kids and for adults as well that have been traumatized by this. And while we knew it was important to go for the kids first because you always protect your most vulnerable and they are our future, mm -hmm. uh, but we have to put things in place for adults and yes. for our seniors. And so those were the kinds of things that we've been trying to do. But it was also important to say that we need this money because some people are going to need some supports throughout their life. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's so important to continue to fight to get money to, to carry people all the way through. Um, and, and that was what I was excited about, and we're still asking for more money, was for that recast um, yeah. funding. That's because right. that's for mental health services yes. and mental health supports. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, you know, we got $5 million, but we need more than $5 million. I'm thankful for that, yes. but we need more and we deserve more. And I think the other part of helping people to heal is uh, having people involved in the recovery process of our own mm -hmm. community. And that was why it was so important to have uh, people from the city of Flint uh, passing out the water and getting those That's jobs right. and being part of the core team and right. educating their residents um, about the proper use and maintenance of the filters. So us being part of this um, 
this rebirth and rebuilding and rejuvenating our city is going to be part of the healing process as well. So important. Mm -hmm. Let's it is. talk about the recall for, okay. for a moment. Do you think this is a just recall? Not at all. Um, you know, I, this recall law is really amazing to me mm -hmm. because it, it, you don't have to do anything egregious, yeah. which just a fact. Just a fact. No, I don't think it's just, especially when we have people that sat here before me, told us the water was safe, uh, drink up, didn't speak out, and nothing has happened. But then, you know, here I come saying, let me tell you about this water, and actually tried to get people to declare an emergency even before I got in office and uh, was not listened to and said I was politicizing things, and I fought to get the money. Uh, for Flint, for the pipes, for other kinds of services, and um, been a voice for people. So, no, I don't think it's just when, you know, it, it's interesting. If I were in a, a, in the, a different workforce where I was the CEO of a company, they say, wow, you have done a great job, and we're going to promote you. We're going to give you a raise. We're going to do all kinds of things. Not we're going to take you out and, um, for doing yeah. a good job. Absolutely. I've never seen anything like it. Um, I think it's unfair. You know, um, I, I see uh, undertones of race. I see undertones of gender in this. Yes. And it's been, and I'm going to say it's, it has, it's been hard as a female uh, dealing with some of these things where I know I would be treated differently if I were a male. Yes. <laughs> Do you want to talk about that just a little bit? Sure. Okay. Sure. All right. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what would you say? About that. Uh, it, it has. It's been. It's it's difficult when mm -hmm. sometimes you walk in and you're the only woman there. That's right. You're the only woman there, and sometimes you get discounted. It's it's been interesting because I've mm -hmm. been two different uh, meetings or conferences, mm -hmm. and they say, "And what line of work are you in?" Or they think that the 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 other person traveling with me, uh, if, if it might be my um, chief of staff or what. A, with me and they'll assume that that is the mayor, never thinking, oh, it's a woman. Well, yes, it is. And um, that part is hard sometimes. It really, really is. Yeah. It's these women in these patriarchal structures. Mm -hmm. and, and so many times you are the only woman uh, at the table. And so that sets a precedent. It sets a precedent. It, sets a pre it, it sets really a does. But I'm proud to be the first woman there. I really am, in Absolutely. spite of everything that happens. And people have asked me, would you do it again with everything you've gone through? Right. And I have quickly said yes. Yes. Uh, and and I, w I said yes because we have been able to make so much happen for Flint that nobody ever thought would happen in such a short period of time yes. Yes. that it's been worth it. But, you know... Um, even when you talk about being a woman, uh, you know, it was interesting me, to me that I was called a little girl and how I was, we're going to teach this little girl a lesson and treat. I said, you know what? First of all, I'm a grown woman. Yes. I'm not even a young one. Mm. <laughs> not even a young one. Uh, so there's a lot of disrespect that goes on. There is. Now, and briefly, just talking about this, and then we're going to have you talk to the viewers okay. about why you are the best candidate. But okay. Your detractors have said that they feel abandoned mm -hmm. and that you've retreated from public discourse. What do you say to that? And you know, well, you know, it's really, I don't know why people would feel like that, and I'm sorry that they do, because it's one thing when you're dealing with uh, city business as usual. Yes. But when you have what we have had is a water crisis, yes. you have to go all over. And right. I love spending time in the community, and that's what I've been doing. But if I don't go, how I've been going to Washington and across this country, that's how I've been able to bring resources here. And so if I stay here all the time, I can't do the work that needs to be done in Washington, D.C., or getting other people from all around the country to come and speak up for Flint and want to support Flint. And so it's a delicate balancing act, and sometimes it's very difficult. It it's very difficult. And I know that wouldn't be going on if we weren't under a water emergency or for, crisis. For sure, and this is an excellent segue to if you would like to look into the camera and tell the viewers 
why you should remain mayor. I'm glad you said that. Well, first mm -hmm. of all, because I said this is not a, a, I shouldn't even be in an election right now. Uh, it should be four years, and I should be able to finish my four years. I do believe I have done a, a good job. I haven't said that I'm perfect, because none of us are, but I've been speaking up and speaking out for Flint, and that's something I'm going to continue to do. And I, you know, I said it the other night, I'm going to go near and far and continue to search for funds. I just got back from Washington saying we need more support, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fight for Flint. I'm not going to start because I love Flint, and we have not gotten what we deserve as a result of what has happened. Mm, and that is very well spoken. Thank you very much, Mayor Dr. Karen Weaver. Thank you. We're very glad to have you today. And this is that is it for today for Meet the Candidates. I have been your host, Sharima Bauer, and we'll be back soon with more interviews from mayoral and city council candidates for the November 7th election. <music>